gue tuh bukan dukung poligaminya ya, tapi lebih ke Gimana? kebebasan orang-orang untuk menentukan um, hubungan seperti apa yang cocok buat mereka. Hmm. Oke. Okay. <laughs> Kalau suka, suka obrolan daging, jangan lupa subscribe ke channel ini dan juga turn on notifications. Dan hari ini nggak kalah beda dan dalamnya dagingnya. Daripada kedua pasangan ini, Andrea dan Joe. Welcome to Isolate Show. Thanks Yay! Thank you. This is the first time, you, Joe. You're on time. any podcast uh, talking so about this. Not the first time I'm on any podcast, but the first one that I'm on a local podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. We want to talk about something that is very, I would say, unique, uh, probably unheard of among some people, mm. and definitely very, very not common mm. in Indonesia. It's called ethical non-monogamy. Yeah, E N M. Please define what that is. <laughs> ethical non-monogamy is actually an umbra uh, umbrella term. Jadi itu sebenarnya di bawah payung besar ethical non-monogamy ini uh, ada yang namanya um, polyamory, ada yang namanya open relationship. Mungkin teman-teman di sini lebih lebih sering dengar open relationship ya mungkin ya. Terus juga ada yang namanya threesome, swinging. Dan macam-macam sebenarnya itu di bawah payung besar ini, hmm. gitu. Uh, jadi maksudnya dari tadi polyamory lah ke swinging, swinging. Poligami juga by the way. Poligami itu bilang. semua hmm. itu adalah berbeda-beda rules rulesnya. Uh, gini, kalau ngomongin rules lagi itu ujung-ujungnya your relationship, your marriage, your rules. Okay. Jadi seharusnya dua individu atau individu-individu yang ter Ter, apa ya, tercakup di dalam hubungan itu okay. yang bikin rulesnya maunya seperti apa. Okay. Jadi kita nggak ada rule yang sama. Alright. One size fits all tuh nggak ada okay. sebenarnya. Yang penting adalah consensual among the adults. Yes. Ya kan? Jadi, dan more than one couple. Yes. Sorry, more than one. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, not necessarily. Tapi ya, yeah, jadi gini. Kalau ethical non-monogamy, INM itu sebenarnya juga tadinya CNM. Consensual non-monogamy, hmm. tapi akhirnya dia uh, kayaknya hmm. mengganti ternya jadi ethical aja. Okay. Nah, by the way, yang mungkin orang sering salah salah kira itu, oh berarti ini kayak selingkuh yang di diiklasin dong, kayak selingkuh terbuka gitu. No, it's not cheating at all, because kalau selingkuh itu adalah apapun, essentially the breaking of an agreement. Jadi komitmen yang udah disepakati bersama, itu yang dilanggar. Itu namanya cheating. Sedangkan kalau ethical non-monogamy itu, semua harus consensual, harus kesepakatan bersama, ada kejujuran, keterbukaan, dan um, apa ya, kayak semuanya setara. Okay. Kayak misalnya kalau netizen gue nih ngomongin kayak sama aja kayak poligami dong, kok lu dukung poligami misalnya? Gue tuh bukan dukung poligaminya ya, tapi lebih ke Gimana? kebebasan orang-orang untuk menentukan um, hubungan seperti apa yang cocok buat mereka. Hmm. Oke. Okay. Tapi kalau kamu bilang kamu adalah I N M M M, ya kan? Tadi kan ada banyak hal sananya gitu hmm. kan? So in a sense bahwa memang kamu juga support polygamy dong? Um, Not you're practicing, but you understand that. Okay, you can see why people do that. Yes, hmm. tapi kalau buat gue lebih kayak kalau if they choose it emang consciously dan juga emang secara sukarela itu kan pilihan dia. Oke. Okay. Siapa gue buat ngejudge? Cuma yang mungkin yang yang gini loh, kesetaraan. Adakah kesetaraan di situ? Hmm. Well, itu. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yang membedakan kan di situ. Jadi okay. ternyata gue gara-gara iya namanya gue baru tahu nih. Poligami itu ada dua. Kalau yang cowok punya istri banyak, mm -hmm. itu namanya poligini. Oh, poligini. Sebaliknya, poliandri. Mm -hmm. ah. Kalau yang satu cewek, suaminya banyak. Oh, never heard of that one, oke. Okay. Yeah, right? Yeah. Nah, gitu. Jadi bedanya. Tapi ada kesetaraan in the sense bahwa misalnya cowok kita mau poligini, tetap satu cowok dengan banyak ceweknya, banyak istrinya itu. Itu menurut gue balik lagi ke yang lihat lah ya. Iya, <laughs> tapi, tapi you are okay misalnya contohnya, let's say ya, semua lima-lima istri semua setuju. Berarti you okay with that dong? Kalau buat gue lebih kayak, itu suka-suka orangnya suka -suka ya, orang. bukan karena bukan gue yang ngejalanin. Gue mau itu judge nanti. gitu, nanti. jadi kayak. Maksudnya kan, you, berarti, I'm, again, I'm not saying that you are endorsing or whatever, but you understand lah intinya, each of this individual, apa namanya, decision, dan mm -hmm, apa, mm -hmm. uh, different, different, apa tadi, kategori, dan lain sebagainya. Yeah. You understand that. Yeah. Because about the freedom to choose as yeah. long as couples semua yeah. consenting. Betul. Oke, okay. saya akan mau tanya, saya mau tanya, jadi, which one are you from all this, tadi, I'm really about tadi itu? Yeah, I'd say our relationship is a little bit more uh, 
similar to a typical monogamous relationship in that we've already made the decision to be partnered together for life. Okay. And so the only difference is that our commitment to each other doesn't also include sexual or emotional fidelity, which means that both Andy and I can and have had other partners outside of our relationship. So whether that's sexual or uh, non-sexual partners that we just bond with very well and have an emotional connection with. Uh, so our relationship rules don't also then mean that we must stay faithful to each other for uh, not allowing ourselves to have emotional connections with other people or sexual connections with other people. Mm. So I think going back to what Andy was saying before, the idea is much more that you're able to build your own relationship in the way that you want, mm. as opposed to having to set or follow a f uh, set predefined rules that are already created for you. Okay. Whereas I think for most people, uh, there's not a whole lot of conscious thought put into mm -hmm. how you want to build your relationship. Mm -hmm. It's that this is the way that has always been done. This mm -hmm. is the way that society has deemed is the correct way to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what the movies or the songs that we listen to on Spotify. These are mm -hmm. all the things that are going to kind of create this assumption that the only way to do things is this way, mm -hmm. which is monogamy. Okay. Yeah. How did you come about this thing here? Yeah? Because, okay, let's start with maybe Juju. Sure. Have you always been? Uh, in, a, in an ENM relationship? No, I'd say most of my life I've been monogamous, but probably it would be better classified as, um, well, okay, let me put it this way. I think there was, there was two really big defining moments in my life that made me realize that, okay, this is something that I want to experience and I want to try. Um, the first was I was in a long distance relationship uh, with someone who I was very much in love with and we had a really deep connection but of course because of the distance there were certain things that just weren't available and we had a don't ask don't tell which is essentially do whatever you want fill your needs however you feel you can but don't let me know about it because I don't want my feelings to be hurt and so in kind of going through that for over the course of three years um, you know the experience that I had was that I still very much loved my partner and I had this really deep relationship with her, but I was still engaging with other people mm -hmm. sexually, and that didn't lessen the love that I had for her, mm -hmm. and that didn't change how I felt about her, and didn't change me wanting to be with her at all. And, you know, I had friends with benefits, I had longer term relationships, you know, I had people who were just casual one night, and all of that kind of didn't didn't affect me at all. It didn't make me feel differently about my partner. So that kind of first got the ball rolling and had me start thinking, okay, well, why is that? And is this normal? You know, do I just not care about all of these other women? But that's not true because I have these deep connections with them as well. Uh, so that was the first thing. Um, uh, that relationship ended because we just, it, we couldn't make it work in the sense that she was still in the country that she was in and I was still here in Indonesia mm -hmm. and I wasn't going back there and she wasn't coming here. Mm -hmm. So eventually we called that off. And typically when I go through a relationship with, and I end it and I go through a breakup, I'll take a pretty long period of time to kind of recompose myself and find who I am again because mm -hmm. I feel that oftentimes in relationships I have this tendency to, to shape myself or mold myself into being the person that the other person wants me to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just find it helpful to kind of take that reset. So maybe you'll share a little bit more about this later, but the other, the other term would be like serial monogamy, which I'll let her handle. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, for, for me, you know, I like to have that break in between. So then the next re relationship that I have was another long distance relationship, but it was very different in the sense that that one was purely monogamous. And so it was just she and I, and she had a lot of, a lot of issues that made her feel jealous and insecure. And so I found that, you know, what started off as just she and I engaging sexually only with each other and no one else and not having any emotional or physical connections with other people outside of our relationship, then kind of shrunk to um, not talking to other people on Instagram to then not talking with my own friends, my female mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. that I already had relationships with. And so I found that my world is kind of get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And so that really woke me up to the idea or the concept that if you're just trying to avoid working on the, the underlying issues that cause jealousy or that cause insecurity or that cause you to feel like you are going to lose, excuse me, lose your partner, then it's ultimately going to come up in some other way. Mm -hmm. And so the answer to it in my mind is really not to avoid the things that are going to trigger you, but to get triggered and then find out why you're triggered and then work on that. And I guess we can dive into that a little bit later. But I'd say that those two experiences were really what shaped my, my worldview and had me think a little bit more like, 
on the one hand, I know I can do this. I can be monogamous. I know that I can keep myself from being with anybody else, and I can be faithful. But on the other hand, when I am with other people, it doesn't impact my relationship negatively. Mm -hmm. And I can still engage with my partner and still build a real deep connection with my partner. And it doesn't have any detriment if I'm engaging with other people outside of that relationship as well. Kalau gue sih sebenarnya dari kapan ya? Dari sebelum sama Joe, emang gue itu, I was a serial cheater. And cheater. Makanya, cheater. Mm -hmm. makanya tadi, and I'm not proud of it by the way by saying this, and Joe tadi mungkin sebut juga uh, serial monogamist, because sebenarnya bukan serial monogamist, kalau serial monogamist itu lebih kayak, ya udah lu jadian sama mm. A, lu putus, langsung ke B, nggak mm. ada, nggak ada breaknya in between mm. gitu. Sedangkan kalau gue lebih ke serial cheating, and then juga namanya monkey branching. You know how you monkey branch, mm. and then kayak lu belum lepas dari branch yang satu, lu pindah ke branch yang satu lagi kan. Nah itu, hmm, since I was 16 actually, jadi kayak, uh, I'm 34, so it's been a long time, mm. and apparently I realized that's my pattern, and I think in my last relationship, I realized that long-term monogamy for me is so unrealistic, then I would still like to have the freedom to interact, to engage um, with other people emotionally and then um, sexually, intellectually, and lain lain itu. Jadi dari situ gue mulai explore the idea of ENM juga. Mm -hmm. um, mulai baca-baca, dan akhirnya gue taruh di highlight. Mm -hmm. And apparently when we met on social media, yeah, on Instagram, ternyata Jo udah sempat lihat-lihat uh, oh, highlights. I did my research, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so wait, at that time, ya, guys. Yeah. <laughs> at that time you were just looking for somebody who's also in that kind of relationship, ENM. So yeah, that's actually interesting. I mean, I, at that time I had just gone out of a of a relationship yeah. again, and so I was during that period of time where I was again finding myself, and that coincided really well with uh, the pandemic. And so the whole pandemic, pretty much, I, I listened to a lot of podcasts. I did a lot of research. I read through a lot of books, you know, the More Than Two book, for example, which is a, a great. Um, mm -hmm. It's like the Bible for yeah. anyone yeah. who wants to go or who wants to understand ENM mm -hmm. better. More Than okay. Two, I highly recommend it. Yeah. And so, I mean, reading that and listening to different podcasts and kind of ex exploring that idea, I kind of got into my head like this is something that I want to try mm -hmm. and I gave myself an out like I will try this for my relationship and if I don't like it if it's something that doesn't work for me then I'll just not do it anymore and that's fine but I, will, I want to explore this as something I want to try and so you know actually what was it like a week before she popped up I had I was on a hike with my mom and I was talking with her about it and I was saying look you know like this is I've gotten to the stage in my life where I know exactly what I want I know who I am as a person I have a pretty clear idea of what my needs and desires are and I've gotten to the point that I think the only way that I'm going to evolve further is if I bring in somebody else and so there's somebody else in my life that I have to compromise with that I have to make sacrifices for there's somebody that I have to kind of learn how to live with because I've lived by myself for such a long time and in most of my relationships being long distance it was still living by myself with the brief stints of spending time with my partner and so I had I didn't really have the chance to experience who I was when I was with somebody else if that makes sense and so I was I was saying like this is the time like I'm ready I, I want to find somebody it's kind of interesting eh? kind of ironic as well because mm -hmm. just now you said when you were dating that girl in another country mm -hmm. you said that you were with her but at the same time you're also what's the term like I guess uh, being with other women yep. as well right mm -hmm. it seems like oh maybe there's a misconception that okay you just cannot be alone right and yet you're you were single for one half years which is quite long mm. especially for a guy probably sure i mean i had different priorities i think it's very much kind of the same situation as i'm in now like we have our relationship but my priority right now the thing that i'm focusing the most on is my work and so that's where i put all my energy and most of my time and so you know i put time into our relationship i oh, try yeah, to make sure. sure that we make that work you know and i prioritize it but at the same time i don't have space for anybody else or anything else and so you know i think that is a very common misconception, whereas people who are in non-monogamous relationships are just obsessed with sex and mm. they can't get enough <laughs> and they're constantly looking for it. Yeah. And I think that might be true for some people. Mm -hmm. I just know that for me personally, it's not the it's case. Not. Um, I love sex. I have no problem admitting that. And it's something that I, I would definitely not turn down mm -hmm. if the right opportunity came my way. But I think that those opportunities come fewer and fewer when you're not focusing on finding them. And 
I think there are fewer and fewer opportunities that I would jump at, where perhaps in my younger years I would jump at it a little bit more. Now I'm, I'm a little bit more selective and a little bit more cautious, I think. Okay. Yeah. Like you got raging hormones on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe age has something to do with it. What are the rules uh, between the two of you? Um, so it's not exactly rules, yeah, tapi lebih ke agreement. Yeah. And then we have agreement, we have boundaries juga. Okay. And then one of the agreements that we have is actually um, when we have any kind of intention mm. on pursuing anything with anyone, we tell each other. Sexual atau bukan? Anything. Anything. Yeah. Intention. Mm. Jadi yang yang gini loh Grace, biasanya mungkin kalau di monogamous relationships, itu kan just because you are committed to your partner doesn't mean that you stop being attracted to other people kan. Mm. Tapi kan coba kalau lu di monogamous relationship, emangnya lu bilang kayak, eh by the way, Yeah. Gue kayaknya naksir nih sama rekan <laughs> kerja gue. Apakah lu bakal ngomong itu yeah. ke suami lu? Enggak yeah. dong. In general tuh semua enggak yeah, yeah, ada yang ngomong kayak gitu. Yeah. Atau kayak misalnya kayaknya ini rekan kerja gue deketin gue deh. Yeah. Kayaknya enggak bakal ngomong kayak gitu kan kecuali ke teman lu. Yeah, yeah, Beda. Yeah, yeah. Nah, whereas kalau di hubungan gue sama Jo, kesepakatan kami berdua adalah untuk ngomong. Misalnya. Misalnya gue ada satu cowok di Instagram nih. Gue kayak gue kayaknya tertarik sih sama dia. Hmm. Gue ngomong ke Jo dulu. Oke. Okay. Eh gue pengen DM. Hmm. Gue ngomongin jauh dulu. Tapi Jadi, dia ada right to veto nggak? Uh, we don't have that veto right by the way. Jadi sebenarnya kalau di INM itu, yang veto right itu is very frowned upon sebenarnya karena. But kayak, you set your own rules, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jadi di misalnya, di misalnya anybody that you're interested to pursue, ya yeah, biasanya gue cuma ngomongin aja one way. Berarti dia nggak agree nggak agree, pokoknya itu boleh aja kan? Iya, yeah, tapi. Tapi enggak, bukan berarti um, bebas tapi enggak sembarangan. Hmm. Karena itu kan your conscious decision not to be like that, benar kan? Yes, yes. Benar, yes. am I correct? Yeah, yeah I, I think let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, let's say that Andy has somebody that she's interested in and she tells me and maybe I'm feeling extra fragile yeah, yeah. or I just really don't want her to do it. I think that she would take that into consideration mm -hmm. and make her decisions based on that because ultimately our relationship is the most important one to us. But I definitely do not have the right to say, I don't want you Can't to be with it. this person, don't okay. do it. Because I think like that puts a level of control mm -hmm. over your partner and goes back again to what I was saying. For me at least, the idea is when something triggers me, when I'm feeling insecure, when I'm feeling jealous, I want to ask why I'm feeling that way. And then once I have a better understanding of why I feel that way, then I can make a decision. Is that feeling something that I want to uh, nurture or is it something that I want to change, mm. right? So. It helps me to learn a little bit more about myself, and then I can make conscious decisions about things. And if it turns out that it's something that I want to nurture, like okay, this feeling is something that comes from a place that is a big part of me, and I don't want you to be with this person because of X. You know, his his values don't align with mine, and you know, it's something that I don't think we should be allowing in our relationship. I have the right to express that, and then she gets to make whatever decision that she wants. But I feel that having something like a veto puts a lot of power over your partner, and then goes back to you making decisions for other people and how they can live their life okay. which is fundamentally against what I believe should be done. And ENM juga sih sebenarnya karena sebenarnya ENM itu tadi ada um, ini kan kesetaraan juga sih. Jadi it really values our agency, hmm. kebebasan yeah. kita sendiri dan autonomi kita juga kan masing-masing individu untuk membuat keputusan. Okay. Meskipun tentu tetap dengan consideration to other partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. juga yeah. tetap oke okay. dan S selama ini ketika Andrea uh, all this time when Andrea tells you oh, I want to be with this guy or this guy likes likes her whatever it is so you do send some jealousy Absolutely. you can send jealousy and yep. also likewise same I mean we are not immune to jealousy <laughs> just because we choose to be in this type of relationship but I don't get it maksud gini ya so I'm um, this is the confusing part let's yep. say ini ya okay let's go with Joel because you're a female woman lebih <laughs> gampang Let's say Joe said, oh, I want to pursue this uh, this woman. I know you're a very beautiful woman, so probably you're not threatened by any other women in terms of physical appearances, <laughs> all right? Okay, uh, but you start to say, okay, but and, and, and by the way, Joe can actually have a connection that's just more than one night stand, am I correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, and you feel like, oh, how come Joe is spending more time with her? You feel like that, you know, that, that she has she has a connection with this with, with with your boyfriend. Well, I don't know if it's a, is it term boyfriend or what? Life partner. Life partner. <laughs> <laughs> He's my lover. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Whatever it is, right? 
lu ada jel, lu lu kan jelas, so lu selalu jelas. Kena kok, kena lu masa jauh tu lama lama, kena lebih kesuka ke dia begini. Untungnya sih enggak sih. Hmm. Okay, enggak, enggak sih. Maksud enggak pernah ada feeling kayak begitu sih. Maksudnya, uh, oh like uh, like. Oh, I you feel threatened to make it natural and for people, men or women to feel threatened by by another person. Of course, nah, nah. ini gini. Gue tuh selalu ngomong ya, kita udah di doktrin berdekade-dekade, it's not just us, it's our ancestors segala macam. Kalau monogamy is the way and the only way. Of course, uh, we feel jealous. Even animals get jealous as yeah, well. Kayak yeah. our cats, I got a new cat and then sure. other cats juga got jealous sure. kan. Jadi mm-hmm. kayak I think it's ingrained okay. in us juga. Jadi it's a very natural thing to feel. Okay. Jadi yang gue ngerasa adalah semenjak gue ada di hubungan seperti ini, orang-orang kayak emang enggak feel jealous atau apa. Mm-hmm. Terus gue ngerasa kayak orang-orang tuh nganggap it's very shameful kalau lu ngerasa jealous. Padahal it's not something to be ashamed of to admit that you're feeling jealous, that I'm feeling insecure, sure. that I'm feeling threatened, mm-hmm. gitu. Jadi, mm, dan kayak gini loh, kayak jealousy itu orang taunya cuma cemburu. Tapi cemburu itu apa sebenarnya? Mm. Jadi again, cem, uh, cemburu itu umbrella term lagi, lagi-lagi. Apakah is it envy? Kayak misalnya, I, I envy that you spend more time with her, misalnya. Mm-hmm. Atau is it um, personal insecurity? Misalnya, I don't feel lovable. Kayak mungkin gue waktu itu lagi jerawatan, jadi mm. I don't feel sexy, I don't mm. feel confident mm. with myself. Atau juga relational insecurity, misalnya kayak I don't think we're doing well at the moment, atau I don't feel a connection, I don't mm. I feel distant with you, misalnya. Jadi cemburunya tuh mesti jelas apa dulu nih gara-garanya, okay. atau ada, bisa juga gara-gara ini. Um, emang karena it's something that they do, you know how misalnya other guys kadang-kadang bisa gatel aja. Hmm. Misalnya mereka komitmennya monogami, tapi mereka nya ada di online dating and then they're gaslighting the partner. Hmm. Ya itu gara-gara partnernya juga dong, okay. cemburunya. Jadi ini cemburunya rootnya apa dulu? Okay. You have to know the root so that you know what you need and you can ask for it. Alright. Uh, aren't you afraid? Either one of you, aren't you afraid that okay, you promise that you made is because right now you're in the status right now. You've been meeting what less less than five years, right? Hmm. Hmm. But maybe down the road, you know, another person can yep. come and change that. Relationship is that is what is happening right now. So that kind of jealousy, I would say. Yeah, that's how, how do you deal with that? Actually, that's a question that's pretty often asked. Mm. Yang kayak nanti kalau ketemu yang lain gimana? Nanti kalau lu tinggal, Pasti. yes, of course we feel. I feel apa ya? I have a fear of abandonment. I Anda, have kan? I have fear of um, being replaced. Sure. Fear of loss. Uh-huh. Very natural. Everybody feels that way. Yeah. Cuma kalau buat gue kayak gimana ya? Even if I wanted to be in a monogamous relationship, yang kayak gitu-gitu juga ada, tidak, ada, ada, ada chance-nya tidak terhindarkan juga. Hmm. Tapi chance menurut saya, menurut gue ya, mungkin lebih rendah dibanding karena dia kan gini, karena ada ada, 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 ya? ada rules-nya, yeah. jadi ada pagernya. You know, mm-hmm. like, kayak lu bilang kucing ini, tapi ada pagernya gitu. Yeah. Kalau ini kan benar ada pager, jadi ada gitu mm-hmm. aja. Mm-hmm. That's, my, that's the difference, I think. Kalau yeah. buat gue, yang gue, gue pegang adalah our commitment and that we we are life partners, we prioritize each other, um, dan juga Buat gue lebih kayak gimana ya, Joe punya banyak pilihan di luar sana, tapi he consciously makes the decision to still be with me hmm. every single day, meskipun ada yang lain di luar sana gitu. Jadi gue kayak, hmm. that makes me feel special in a way. Yeah. Okay. Let me jump in on here a little bit, because I think what you said was a really good point. What I'm understanding you're saying is that because you have those rules in place that keep you from exploring outside of your marriage, then it's less likely that you would then leave your partner because you're not getting into a relationship that would pull you out of it. And I think that that's a very valid point. I think the counterpoint to that would be that because you're in a monogamous relationship, when something else comes along that's strong enough to make you want to make that leap, then because you're in a monogamous relationship, it's one or the other. And you can only choose to be with this other person if you give up the relationship that you're already in. Mm. Whereas for us, we don't have that problem. And so I think both sides are true. And I definitely see your point, and I think that the other side to that is that very often, I think what we see, at least anecdotally, from all of the people that I know who are, you know, living monogamous relationships, a vast majority of them are cheating. 
right? A vast majority of them have their, their relationships on the side. And so that's already happening. And then you have what we were saying about you know, serial monogamy, where you go from one relationship, and then because you meet somebody else that's new and exciting, and maybe you want to explore that, but you don't have the means to be able to explore it while you're still in this relationship. Mm -hmm. So you end one and move on to the other. Okay. And I think for us, because we don't have to end one relationship to explore another, then that creates that stability within our relationship where we can still choose each other whilst also exploring outside of our relationship. So, so. We, we I think we create the, the safe space for each other to explore. Right. Okay. And then come back. Let's say one day, Andrea said, uh, Joe, I don't want to be uh, ENM anymore. Mm. I want to be fully, I want us to be fully monogamous. Maybe not marriage. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not having kids. I know you don't, you know, you're a dink, right? Yeah. Uh, would you break up with her? Well, I guess the first question that I would, would ask is why? And she's just done. She's done. <laughs> she's done. And Why? Well, people can change. Like, people can change their minds. <laughs> right. And that's fine. I can accept that. But does that decision about her changing her mind and wanting to be monogamous then extend to me that you want to be monogamous and you want me to be monogamous? In that case, the relationship's over. You know, I don't, if she was a cop? If she's choosing to be monogamous herself and mm -hmm. her choice over yes. her own body and her own free will mm -hmm. then extends to her making decisions about my body and my free will then I believe that relationship's over. So there's nothing that at that point, you guys are so in love that she can say, but that status change will actually just kill that relationship. I think it's tough for me because I have a really difficult time projecting myself into situations that aren't not in there that are not real, right? So <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically, if, if I was still wanting to be uh, monogamous, excuse me, non-monogamous, and she wanted to be monogamous, and that decision extended to her wanting me to also be uh, oh, monogamous, okay. I'd have a lot of questions. I'd want to know why and what changed. And because you know, we've, we've had a lot of these discussions, and mm -hmm. we, we know how we feel about okay. autonomy right. and you know, free will and, and making sure that your decisions are not negatively impacting other people's right to make their own decisions. So I'd want to know the why. I'd want to know what changed. And I'd be open to uh, being convinced uh, <laughs> that her way is the right way. But I think ultimately I'd still have my own um, free will and yeah. I think, how I feel about it. And hypothetically, if it's the other way around? I think, no, it's the same as, if you ask me now, it's the same as Tiba Tiba, like three years down the road, Joe says, I want to have a kid. I would yeah. be like, what the? No, that's not a deal. <laughs> that's not what I signed up for. <laughs> so yeah. I think, you know. Um, it, okay, did it in your relationship? Two uh, deal breakers adalah satu, misalnya contohnya dia monogamous and of, of impacting the other person, harus juga. Mm. Kedua adalah punya anak. Yalah. Benar? Anyway, those two, those two yeah, better, kan? mostly. And everything else, nothing. Nah. Yeah, bisa bohong-bohong itu juga pasti gak mau lah, tipe gitu. Yeah, kan? nah, that's breakers. cheating. Cheating, yeah. cheating can still happen in polyamorous relationship. Oh, yeah? Cheating mm. can still Kalo happen in... Kalau dia gak kasih tau lo, tadi yeah, kemarin tuh. Break, whatever, breaking the agreement lah right. pokoknya. Okay. Jadi, um, yeah, I think for me personally, kalau tiba-tiba ini mau jadi monogamous, mau punya jadi anak. punya anak. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Joe, how old are you? I am same age, 35. 35 yeah. 30, but you're 35, older. So by a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Enough okay. to matter. <laughs> okay, so about 35 years old, right? Yes. A lot of people, you know, I've read articles about Dink especially, mm -hmm. yeah, about, okay, they're happy now because they want to enjoy their lives and they don't sure. want to have extra burdens, maybe they're not ready, whatever it is. Uh, but eventually, some of them, not all, some of them actually regret their decision. Sure. And they wish they have actual children. And people can actually change. I know that I'm already 47, by the way. So I know that a lot of things that I thought back in the 30s might be different from now when I'm sure. in the 40s, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what to say that when you're much older, much older, even my age, like much, much older, you know, getting sicker, you know, yeah. and there's no people around anymore, mm -hmm. right? Not as much fun to go out all the time, that your status will not change. Yeah. I, I don't think there is anything that says that. I'm, I am open-minded enough to accept that I might change my mind in the future. And then, you know, again, when that happens, I'd want to try to approach that with curiosity and understand why and allow myself to have the possibility to be convinced about a new way of thinking. But for right now, I'm very, I'm very sure that this is what I want to do right now. And again, in the future, I might change my mind. And I think we kind of talked about it like it's on the table. Hmm. But What's on the table? Monogamy is on the table. Okay. We're not having kids for sure. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, I think even that, I mean, I'd be open to, to having the discussion. And I think it's Maybe when I'm kids. 34, uh, 37. <laughs> Maybe, but, I mean, I still don't want kids, but I think that I'm open to the idea of talking about it and having that discussion if one of us was to change our mind. But I think it's much better to regret 
not having kids. Yes, thank you for quoting me. Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my like, tweet. So you not have ever you regret having kids, but actually wanting kids? Did no, I would that? I would rather regret not having kids than have kids and then regret really? having them. Of course, you know I think that's unfortunate. Okay. So for the child as well, I think. Okay, sure, sure, of course. Yeah. Uh, recently, kan kau salah si Andre ya, botol lalu kau salah kan yang went viral because you talk about not having children. Ah, uh, mm. child free ya. Yeah, I think it's the topic of every year. Yeah, and then people kan attack kamu karena kamu bilang kamu influencer. Nah, boleh kamu kan mm. promo 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 yeah. kayak begitu. And I understand and, and I saw your agreement, uh, your argument bahwa lu bilang enggak kamu selalu dulu bilang influencer orang suruh jam the building kan mereka juga enggak jam the building, yeah. ya kan? So why you have to follow me on this one? Tapi on the other hand ya pasti zaman sekarang semua anak-anak muda kan pasti nonton social media and look up to figures such as yourself. Gitu loh. Jadi you can, you can also cannot say ya yeah, gua enggak ada respons, it's up to me to say whatever I want gitu loh. Uh, sampai sekarang ini sebagai your balance ya sebagai seorang private citizen tapi juga sebagai seorang influencer itu gimana? Like this is some all this topic that we're talking about today is very very unconventional, you know that, mm. right? And people mm. gonna be attacking it even after this. Yeah, right. So gimana cara apa handle this and balance this kawan semua? Hmm, kalau gua lebih ke again I encourage people to choose. Whatever they uh, whatever they think is best for them, see. But they, but they know they know what they good for them. But they want you not to do this. That's the point. Yeah, kalau yeah. kayak gitu sih kayak sorry bro, yeah, I <laughs> can't <think> please everyone. <laughs> that's unfortunate. I think there's a there's a lot of people who want to ensure that everybody follows the status quo and does things exactly the same way, which I don't feel is necessary. I don't need to change anybody's mind on mm -hmm. them being monogamous or not. But I also don't need to have them change my mind. Okay. You know, I'm willing to have arguments about it and discussions. I think debate is healthy and it helps you to, to consider other sides of things. But I think that there is already so much, uh, there's so much push towards mon uh, being monogamous. I think that's the norm. That's, mm -hmm. I think then there doesn't really need to be much argument for the reasons sure. why to be monogamous. You know, I think everyone is already well aware of the benefits of it. Uh, so, you know, then I think what you're trying to do with with uh, showcasing that other side and letting people know that there is an alternative. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because I've often wondered why I feel the way that I feel because it doesn't feel like me, if that makes sense. So when I'm feeling jealous about something, you know, going back to what you said before, why do you allow yourself to feel jealous and what's the purpose behind it? I think for me, the understanding is that it's a trigger for me to then look deeper and understand a little bit more about why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And is it because I just believe that there should be only one person deep down? And is that a part of me or is that just because it's what I've been programmed to believe from, again, all of the music that we listen to, all the movies that we watch, all the love stories that we read, you know, and, and I think that having the ability to question those things and then make a decision based on what you want and what is in line with your values, I think, is, is what everyone should be doing for everything, not just relationships. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, there's this conception that people such as yourself in this kind of relationship uh, maybe didn't have a good role models. Mm. Maybe your parents uh, were divorced. We have trauma. Mm. Trauma, yeah. yeah. Is, is, that, is that what happened with any one of you? So I've been quite open about my upbringing. I was raised in a cult. And so I've asked myself this oh, question yeah, quite a lot. I didn't even know this. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So He's yeah, open about it. We have another podcast about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Christian cult, you mean? Uh, a Christian cult, okay, yes. Of so, of course. Of course. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I think, you know, for me, I do ask myself that question, how much of what I believe is down mm. to the way that I was raised. But, you know, I've actually just had a conversation about this the other night. And, um, you know, I think what I've... the what I've come down on, the side that I've come down on, is that the most of my adult life, I was monogamous. And I absolutely rejected the way that I was raised and, uh, you know, the, the, the ideas of free love and everything were things that just didn't really make sense to me. But I think that when looking at everything logically and then asking myself why I'm making those decisions, you know, what I realized is that living a non-monogamous lifestyle is actually just much more in line with who I am as a person. Now, whether that who I am as a person is shaped by my childhood, that's hard to say. You know, maybe a psychiatrist or something yeah, would be able to my, tell me that's that. My job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Have people called you worse names like, you know, on the, on the, on the internet? Yeah, and um a slut. Yeah, I bitch. I think I think it's a, it's a common term to yeah. be said to everybody who comes out as polyamorous. On especially the internet, to the, especially to the female side, more than the male. Yeah, mm. yeah, bener bener. And jadinya, um, there's a movement, kayak misalnya in the states gitu, kayak misalnya, yaudah, if you dikatain slut, ya just own it aja. Mm. Terus bisa apa emang? Yeah. 
Lagian, like okay. I know I'm not a slut. Lagian, like yeah. terus kalau misalnya let's say ya, let's say, let's say I was a slut. So, hmm. and so what is the definition of a slut? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yang kayak promiscuous person ya, udah terus kenapa? Mm. <laughs> well, it's just not very aligned to the society that we live in today. That's what it is. But is it though? I think that's that's the the thing that people like to be very judgmental about it. But we talked about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the the idea is that everybody to a certain extent. I mean, from my experience personally, I have had a lot of promiscuous sex when I was single with many different women. And so the idea that somehow uh, women are supposed to be more prude and not want sex, you know, but men are supposed to be voracious and, and constantly looking for sex, that doesn't add up because unless the men are having sex with each other, you know, <laughs> which can happen too. <laughs> but <laughs> for the most part, when you're having heterosexual sex, you go out and you're trying to look for somebody to have sex with, you know, you're finding other women. And so the idea, the concept that women are supposed to be these prude angels that, you know, have no sex drive and or are going to save themselves for marriage and then only have sex with one person for the rest of their life, I know that that does happen and it absolutely can happen. And if that's a conscious decision that you make because you want to and it aligns with your values, then that's absolutely okay. But the idea that somehow society, the norm is that, and then And anyone who's outside of that is just absolutely a deviant. I don't think that that's true because my experience is that everyone is doing that. So maybe I'm just in the wrong circles, and that could be. <laughs> but my experience has been, you know, people are promiscuous and people enjoy having sex and people are interacting with other people as they feel like they they can get whatever they feel like they can get away with. They'll do. Okay. Did you grow yeah. in the states? Uh, no, I, I grew up here, but I did spend most of my formative adult years abroad, and so perhaps that has something to do with it as well. Definitely has something to do with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is I would say so. Yeah. Culture, but, but people also call you irresponsible. You say like, okay, I just do whatever I want as long as we, I guess, agree. We have a, you know, we have an agreement that I can do whatever I want. So people call that irresponsible, out of control, things like that. Mm. Do you agree with that? No, I think it's a misconception, ya. Yeah? Kayak, um, you cannot control your lust. Bukan, mm. tak, bukan, sorry, bukan control the lust, ya. Lebih kayak sana udelnya aja gitu loh. Sorry, kata-katanya adalah kata kasarnya sana udel. Ya, lu mm. maunya, lu kan maunya enak-enak aja. Mm. You know, apa, kan, sorry, just long distance relationship right yeah. now, right? Because mm, you're technically. in... Technically. Well, because you don't live in the same distance. city, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not a country at yeah. least, right? Okay, uh, jadi, iya dah, maunya, Kalau gue mau ketemu, gue ketemu. Kalau hmm. gue mau sama orang lain, sama orang lain. Hmm. Jadi kayak sana udelnya gitu loh. Kelihatannya mungkin kayak gitu. Tapi sebenarnya ya, um, between me and Joe, there's a lot of work yep. that we do in yep. our day. It's a professional that, work. No, oh, the, uh, the, the work that we, yeah, hmm. that we do, that we put into our relationship. Yeah. Ini kan yang orang-orang nggak tahu. Yang, ya gue juga sama Joe juga ngapain gue bilang-bilang. Kayak, oh, this, these are the struggles that... We're facing. Terus kayak these are the work that I that we. But we do. I mean, you do share so. on your Instagram as well. When we're, you know, we have things like we have a monthly check-in. So you know, every first Saturday of the month, we have an hour that we check in and we talk about you know what our past month has been like and mm -hmm. questions that we ask will be things along the lines of like you know how have I made you feel loved? How have I made you feel ignored? You know, things like this. And I think the idea of people who are in non-monogamous relationships don't put in the work into relationships, I think is is absolutely untrue. And I think it's actually the opposite, that as a general rule, those who are in non-monogamous relationships are better at maintaining relationships because they are have more practice and they put more effort into it. And I think, in fact, if you want to have a non-monogamous relationship successfully with multiple partners, Ethical. you need to be good at managing oh, relationships. I, I, I agree with you. And I imagine it's actually very tiring, <laughs> you know, yeah. trying to explain, discuss, and you know, make absolutely. sure that the person yeah. is not yeah. jealous, that kind of thing. You manage yeah, expectations, yeah. those kind yeah. of things. Reassuring uh, mm -hmm. each other, the emotional labor. I, I can jujur, imagine. Jujur berat yeah, banget sih. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kayak orang mungkin lihatnya kayak senang-senangnya aja. Enggak, enggak semuanya senang-senang aja. Senang-senang aja, banyak seksnya doang aja. Kan, uh, jadinya, padahal kan. enggak, enggak. Itu banyak kan tuh communication-nya itu sih, yang ngobrolnya, yang bolak-baliknya, yeah. back and forth-nya. And mungkin ini sih, Grace, yang tadi gue juga pengen ngomong. Hmm, kayak kita dengar cheating orang banyak di mana-mana kayak biasa banget ya. Yeah. Tapi gitu, mm -hmm. dengar ada yang satu coming out as, hey, by the way, I'm ethic, uh, in an ethical non-monogamous relationship. Kayak, wah, oh, langsung ramai banget. Yeah. Padahal, gue yang jujur gitu, gue bukan kayak gue yang gue nggak main belakang anjir. Oh, tapi kayaknya idenya bukan masalah cheatingnya deh. Menurut gue adalah idenya itu adalah konsep of especially again in this culture adalah women having multiple sex partners. Itu menurut gue kayaknya masih orang tidak bisa terima. Hmm. Why do you think that is? 
Yeah, it's the culture. I mean, if you want to look at the history based on my observation, mm. kind of the religion, mm. the you know, kebudayaan, and all these kind yeah. of things. Gitu. So I, Eastern I mean, norms. Yeah, Padahal I don't know Eastern what they're yeah. 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 But if you look at even back then on China, gitu, semua kan adalah the Chinese most happy thing. Gitu, 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 kan? Yeah, this kind of things, right? So male mungkin mereka lebih besar forgiving. Women with multiple sex partners, tanya gitu. Ya, ini menurut gua orang mm. susah itu belum bisa terima. Itu yeah. aja sih menurut gua uh, de. Ya udah, I don't need you to understand. It's fine. I don't need to. I'm not trying to convince you or change your mind. Anyway, okay, now, you do you aja. Uh, I have to ask that question. Mata nak paru masa kena lu sangat modelnya. Karena beratannya, okay, ni as long as gua gua suka, I'm gonna do it because as long as gua agree kan. Nah, gimana tapi ni ya? Uh, ada orang bilang kan ada something yang memang kita nggak juga gak, kita suka dan I cannot really control and I'll just do it. Misal contoh orang let's say ni kita mau extreme case ya pedophile. Mm. I, I believe that some of them have sicknesses yang mereka emang sukanya sama anak-anak yeah. kecil. Yeah. Okay. Mereka nggak bisa control that urge, ya kan? So they just do it gitu loh. It's very illegal and I don't agree with it, obviously. Tapi what happened? <laughs> yeah, what happened if one of them said, "Tapi this is this is who I am, mm. and this is and these urges are very natural. I was born like this." Nah, gimana kayak begitu? I mean, I'll take this. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the argument for me is that I'm not submitting to my urges. It's not something that is out of my control. I think it's exactly the opposite. I'm very in touch of what is causing me to want to do a thing, and then when I have that desire, then I ask myself again why. And then if it, again, if it's something that I want to nurture, then I follow through with it. And if it's not, then I don't. And that applies for emotions of all types, including mm. emotions like lust, including emotions like desire, all of that. Okay. And so it's it's much more. It's a conscious way of living where I'm making decisions that are going to impact my life in a way that is in alignment with what I actually want to do. Okay. And so, you know, I would say that the the argument that you're making about you know pedophiles who are attracted to children and saying you know well I, you know I have this desire and so I'm just going to do it. I think that that applies a lot more to I am jealous and therefore I won't do it. Mm. If that makes sense, you're just allowing your emotions to dictate your actions. Where for me, I don't like the idea of living that way. I think for me, being disciplined and being consistent with what my end goal is and living my life and structuring my life in a way, my decisions in a way that is going to bring me towards that end goal is something that's a lot more in alignment with me as opposed to just doing whatever I feel like doing whenever I feel like doing it. So when you said that you want to uh, uh, find other partners, not mm -hmm. partners, yeah, find other, what is the word? Yeah, yeah partners, 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 yeah. Not my partner, yeah, but other relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, what is you looking for? So we have parameters. <laughs> the parameters are for me. You know, I obviously I, for me, sexual attraction is is a must. Um, for but, okay, a when you say sexual attraction, meaning that okay, right now uh, Andrea is not in town. I'm feeling the need to have sex, and again with your measured understanding, that emotion doesn't control you. Mm. You go look for. No, I, I say looking for is different. I think the way that I like to do it is just. I, it sounds very woo woo, but manifestation is definitely something that I like. As in whatever I I know that I want or that I know that I need, then I know that it'll find me at some point, you know, and I don't feel like I have to actively go looking for it, it'll, it'll show up, um, which is how I met Andy. Um, okay. But so for me, I guess then the parameters are, they have to respect our relationship. They have to understand that I have a primary partner, she has a primary partner, and you know, we're going to live our lives together because that's the decision that we've made, and they're not going to get in the way of that. They're mm -hmm. welcome to join and come along for the ride and be a part of, our, part of our relationship for whatever length of time they would like to be in it. But as far as coming in between us and replacing one of us, that's not an option. So that's, I think, a parameter. Another one, of course, is I want to be emotionally connected to them, I want to be mentally connected to them, and I want to be so sexually it's just, attracted. It's not, it's not just for sex, oh, I, uh, you know. I have no problem with that, but we're, we're talking about partners here, yes. right? So oh, for, wait, no, no, the, anything that's oh, anything. Andrea, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, then I think then just the, the basics are that they have to be aware of what their sexual health status is and be actively monitoring that and practice safe sex, they have to respect our relationship. That's pretty much it. They have to be good people. When you look for somebody else, I said Andrea, mm. whether it's one night or whatever it is, uh, what is it something that Andrea doesn't have at the time so you're looking for somebody else? I don't know that that's a fair question in that I don't, I'm not looking for something that Andy doesn't have. What it is is that I'm open for the idea or the, the, the concept of interacting with people who I naturally connect with. So I'm, I'm not 
typically looking for something. I don't have any, for example, any sexual fetishes that she can't <laughs> provide. You know, if that was the case, then that would be something. Let's say, for example, I was very much into BDSM, mm. and she doesn't know how to, you know, whip you, yeah, or do whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, and she's not into that. Then that would be something that I could look for outside of our okay. relationship. But I don't have any of those fetishes that that we can't take care of ourselves. <laughs> and yeah. so I think there's nothing that I'm looking for that she lacks. And it's more, for me, at least the, the idea is that I want to be open to the possibility of entertaining a relationship when it does come my way. Mm. Mm, I think for us, it's not about um, finding someone to, kaya, we're not outsourcing mm. anything and we, we are open to, apa ya, opportunities, bukan karena ada yang kurang dari Jo, iya yeah, uh. bukan kurang karena dari relationshipnya, karena mungkin yang banyak terjadi adalah kalau cheating itu biasa karena uh, mereka nggak satisfied sama Sex marriage-nya lah, misalnya, atau either okay. sexnya atau mungkin dia nggak didengerin yeah, di rumah yeah. atau di berantemin atau apa intinya udah ada masalah dulu di hubungannya, hmm. and then they go out and finding other people okay. uh, compensating kan, whereas that's not what happens in our relationship, karena <laughs> as far as I remember, our commitment is only to find other people when we are in a good place yeah. juga. Jadi, itu untuk, apa ya, mencegah hal-hal yang tidak diinginkan dalam arti, um, we're not running away from our problems. Kalau emang kita lagi punya issues, ya bukannya, ya diberesin di dalam. Bukannya kita cari orang lain okay. untuk kayak have fun, seneng-seneng. Enggak, enggak gitu. Jadi, oke, okay, enggak, maksudnya gue masih bingung ini. Jadi, maksudnya ada seseorang lain lagi itu, itu apa gunanya untuk misalnya bisa contoh ICS for apa? Nah kalau kayak gue nih misalnya personally if you ask me itu gue bukan nyari juga lebih kayak misalnya Ada gini gue travel hmm. Hmm. and then gue ketemu orang oh. di situ and then kayak okay. kayaknya kok ngobrolnya cocok terus kayak emotionally connected terus ada sexual attraction gue akan bilang hmm. dulu by the way kayaknya yeah. um, gue mau coba explore this okay. opportunity jadi gue nggak nyari okay. oh, yeah. kalau yeah. emang gue sama Ju sebenarnya so sama-sama nggak nyari you guys juga. Tinder, right? Uh, so Tinder sengga. <laughs> I I've not explored Tinder. I tried using Bumble here, and it's just not. It's not a um, okay. no. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. when, when you say you're not looking, it means I'm assuming people look through online now. So you don't do that, or no? I think uh, just to go back to what you were saying, I think the idea of looking for something that you don't have within your relationship is a perfectly valid way to do non-monogamy. And I think it's actually very applicable. So if, for example, we're in uh, our long-term relationship and I'm 50, and all of a sudden I no longer have a sex drive, and you still do, perfectly valid for her to then go find somebody else sure. who's going to give her what she needs, okay. right? And so I think that's something that's important to, to, to say as well. We're not currently in that situation now, but it's not something that I think is unrealistic or that it shouldn't be done that way. Okay. Um, the other thing I think is that for both of us, it's much more opportunistic, as in when the opportunity arises and it's something that we want, then... And meets your requirements. Exactly, well, then yeah. And you always tell these people that your relationship... Of course, of yes. course. We're very open and in my own experience... Can I share? Yes. Yeah, in my own experience, I tend to gravitate towards men yang memang mereka INM juga. Menek nggak sih di Indonesia? Gua nggak... I don't date in Indo. Oh, di Indonesia? I don't date in Indo. Um, small world and all, as you know, Jakarta <laughs> is very small and I don't want people to talk, whatever. Anyway, Gua, I don't date in Indo. Oh. Um, I date, I would say sometimes when I travel. Tapi, again, any sometimes, only when opportunity arises. Tapi, again, I tend to gravitate towards people yang emang ENM, jadi gue gak ribet jelasinnya. Yeah. Dan gue tuh bisa lebih, gue ngobrolin sih, oke okay, ini caranya gue, cara lu gimana? Kalau how do you manage your relationships? And so I can, there are things for me to learn. And then maybe to apply to my own relationship juga. And okay. then maybe nanti jadi teman buat Joe juga. Hmm. Jadi kayak... <laughs> Tapi jadi laki itu bukannya bisa contoh nge-cheating on dia punya nggak, uh, couples nggak mau. Nggak, nggak, nggak. Kalau dia single tuh dia nggak IANM boleh nggak? Kalau dia single nggak IANM boleh. Tapi kalau misalnya let's say dia punya partner dan dia unethical, dia yeah, cheating, yeah. gue nggak mau. I don't want to be a part of that. Oke, yeah. oke, okay, oke. Okay, okay. So again, ini kan ethical non-monogamous. So I wanted to be... Ya, ethical-nya tuh semua 360 juga ya, termasuk kalau orang-orang yang ini. Yeah, yeah. Nah, tadi kayak parameters itu, tadi Joe mungkin udah jelasin, tapi kalau kayak gue, um, I think I wanna add juga mm. kayak, um, uh, am, I, am I sexually and emotionally attracted to them or connected? And then juga, are they a good person? Good person maksudnya, um, do they respect us? Do they respect this relationship? And is this a fuck yes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Enthusiastic. Yeah. Mm. Soalnya, um, in my past experiences, mm. yang with the mistakes that I've made was, apa ya? Kayak it's not a fuck yes in the sense that 
sebenarnya it's not a fuck no juga sih tapi kayak lebih kayak uh, ya kalau nggak ada gue juga nggak mati sih hmm. tapi nggak penting-penting amat nih tapi akhirnya kalau gue ambil opportunitynya akhirnya jadi nyakitin Jo yang in an in an unnecessary way aja okay. karena hmm. kan gue juga sebenarnya gue juga kayak mau mau nggak nggak gitu loh hmm. nah jadi so we add that into our yeah. parameters okay. is this a fuck yes yang kayak gue harus banget nih yeah, yeah. ini bener-bener valuable nih Hmm. Ini golden chance banget nih. Yeah, It's yeah. now or never. Okay. Ya udah, yeah, itu it, yang it. baru kayak oke, okay, let's just go for it. Dan sure. honestly, not everything is like that. Oke. Okay. Ya yeah. mungkin orang kayak pikir yang kayak oh, berarti bebas berarti sembarangan. Yeah. Enggak, enggak gitu karena well, not, some people probably want to do it like that maybe ya. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fine. Guys, not you it's, guys. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yang tadi gue juga mungkin mau nambahin kalau kayak Joe kayak misalnya let's say Joe's 50 and then you couldn't, you know, you're impotent or whatever <laughs> then. Yeah. yeah. I'm still allowed anyway. Tapi Uh, yang suka kejadian juga, by the way, kalau I&M ini ada yang misalnya dia uh, asexual, hmm. dia nggak punya drive sama hmm. sekali kan, dia uh, air, uh, hmm. dia bukan aromantic, dia tetap mau ada emotional hmm. connection with the partner, tapi nggak ada sexual drive-nya. Hmm. Ya udah, dia bolehin pasangannya kayak ya udah you get your needs met some hmm. elsewhere. So it works juga sih, jadi kayak your relationship, your rules juga kan, okay. atau aja sendiri. Yeah. Kalau kalian in relationship right now, okay, you guys are in relationship that means, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so how uh, financial does it work? So, Kita masih yeah. separate we, aja, yeah? Separate. Yeah. separate. Yeah. Okay. Ha- have you ever guessed done threesome? No. no. And it's not something? I wouldn't say it's not something, it's we just not something that's it. happened yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it. Uh-huh. Okay. But I think for me, concerns are lebih kayak logistics. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the idea that you are both going to find somebody that you're both attracted to and both want to play with is is... Agak susah ya. A little bit more than just one of you finding somebody that you're attracted to. Oh, you know? unless yang kayak what well, we talked yes. about, I find <laughs> women for you. <laughs> Jadi gak lebih yeah. gampang. Yeah. I know his type. <laughs> Berarti itu harus sama women juga dong. Which I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Am I going under fire? Gak makanya harus edit plus in conversation ya. Okay. I don't know, in Indonesia bagaimana? Apakah they're so open like you? Atau enggak, gue enggak tahu. Tapi pertanyaan adalah, you are so open, knowing that there can be a lot of backlash against you or even Joe, ya yeah, kan? Uh, jadi kenapa sih lu mau so open about this? Why? You could have just pretend, oh ya maju berdua doang. Karena nobody knows about, I don't even know who is, ya ada siapa-siapa, kan gue enggak tahu. Hmm. Why? Hmm, kalau gue orangnya, I'm an open book. Hmm. I wear my heart on my sleeve, and hmm. gue emang orangnya kayak gitu in general. In every aspect of my life, gue terbuka seperti itu. Jadi, I don't see a good reason as to not oh be open about it. Hmm. Justru gue kayak ya emang reason ini kenapa ya dan gue senang aja karena gue sebagai cat womanizer anyway gue selalu ngomongin tentang sexual hmm. relationships. No. Kok sexual relationships? <laughs> sexual <laughs> health and healthy relationships. Hmm, yeah. Jadi um, might as well bring it up juga hmm. um, introduce people to this alternative of, you know, yeah, relationship yeah. 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 With you guys being so open, right? Uh, about being ENM, uh, have there been any, um, what's it called, um, not just backlash, but also maybe impact to your professional careers? Like maybe the people don't want to endorse you, people don't want to be trained under you or go to your, uh, what's it called, to your um, company as well? So far, I haven't experienced that. I think I'm also not as, my uh, Instagram page, which is my only front-facing thing that I have is much more about training than mm-hmm. it is about sexual health and relationships. And so typically I don't I don't share very much about that mm-hmm. on there. Uh, so no, I haven't experienced any backlash. I'm also trying to care less about what people think. Okay. You know, so I'll probably share this on my on my page as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah. page yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Alright. How about you? Yes, well you're more public also obviously I don't think I've ex- ever experienced that before so far. Pernah ada yang mungkin gue lagi kerja sama-sama brand, terus tiba-tiba viral, tapi brandnya malah senang juga, kata iya nggak hmm. apa-apa, goreng aja terus. Hmm. <laughs> kan makin banyak yang ini, main ke page-nya dia, oh ya udah terusin aja kalau gitu. Hmm. So, pernah, pernah satu orang, uh, I, I know, uh, what's it called, an artist, hmm. you know, and she was promoting a beauty skincare hmm. that is very known to be more conservative. Hmm. And sometimes oh. she goes out and then, you know, it's not as conservative as they want it yep. to be, so they cut off that relationship, you know, but she didn't care as well, you know, she just went ahead. Well, yeah, mungkin itu kayak values yang gak align, ya udah, they filter mm. themselves any, mm-hmm. anyway, kan? So you have not experienced anything. Oh, okay, so far, maybe another question then. Have any, okay, any of your friends, your close friends, yang, uh, kok gini ya, and then start to <laughs> shift away from you guys? Um, 
For my friends sih enggak, tapi they told me emang some people around them ada yang ngomongin kayak gitu. Kalau hmm. masih temenan sih pakai womanizer segala macam. Pasti, hmm, pasti. Cuma untungnya teman-teman gue ini I only yeah, have small yeah. very close apa net net of friends juga. Mereka kayak I know who Andrea is in in real yeah. life. Mm-hmm. They know what values that I have apa segala macam dan kami temenan cocoknya karena apa. Okay. Jadi kayak just you don't know anything about her. Yeah. Just shut up. I think in Indonesia there's this thing, yeah. Uh, if if you're associated with somebody, that means you must be that person. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Oh, if yeah. you're uh, if I'm friends with you bo- you both, eh, maybe Grace was only at them. You know what yeah. I mean? That kind of thing. Does that fear? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think there's there's a lot of that that happens, and people will tend to cast a lot of judgment whenever they're. I think more so to other people that are in our life as opposed to us personally. Mm. And you know, I think for my friends at least. It's kind of what Annie was saying, you know, they all know who I am as a person. I've always been upfront and clear about who I am and what I stand for and what I believe. And I don't think that this relatively new lifestyle that I've chosen, I mean, I've only been doing this for, for two years, right, since we've been together. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively new thing that I'm doing, but it's still very much on brand in the sense that it's aligned with who I am as a person and, and who I've always shown myself to be. Mm-hmm. And so people who are already attracted to that and who are already friends with me for who I was, this new thing doesn't really impact mm-hmm. them at all because it's still very much aligned with who I already was before that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I haven't had any issues with that, actually. But thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so thank much, you. Grace.